<coughs> okay, we got an AX4N99 model. Uh, it's pretty similar. In fact, it's almost identical to the uh, 4F50N, which I have a video on. Uh, the big difference is the valve body. Um, this one came in for no movement. Pretty common. Converter is stripped. Uh, we can go through here and see what else we can find that's wrong with this thing. There's an O-ring here. You take off for your lockup. 30 torque <coughs> on the in their own socket. 30 torques on the <coughs> five bolts that are here. And then there's two tens up inside there. Eight millimeter for the filler tube, the servo. Make sure your cover is not all worn out. I've never seen one worn, but you never know. Check your rubber here, make sure it's nice and pliable. You want to check your bore for your servo, make sure it's not worn out. I've never run across one that was, but you never know what you're going to get. I don't know why this kid left the bolts for the cross member back here on here. Neutral switch is 8 millimeter. He should have taken this off also. Side covers eight millimeter. has a reusable molded gasket on the back. Eight millimeter for the speed sensor. Eight millimeter there. Eight millimeters on the pump and valve. Motor. Make sure your cover's not all eat up. There's a little scoring there, but we can uh, wet stone that out. Undo your temperature sensor and your shift solenoids. Your lockup solenoid and your EPC. Okay, you're going to want to check the splines on this pump rotor check your surface down in here make sure it's not all scored up just a little bit when polish that out I'm 
you want to pay close attention to your pump shaft bearing. There is a valve in this valve body that we're going to replace. It's wise to do it if you can come up with the tool that they have to resize the bore. It's best to resize it. It's very hard to come by nowadays. Make sure this surface is in good shape right here and you want to make sure your splines are in really good shape. And I have seen these break apart and turn, so pay close attention to that. But these splines and the torque converter is what's stripped out. Fifteen sixteenths on this bolt right here. Ten millimeters on the channel plate. millimeter on the bolt right here. All right there's a couple spots on this where you can tap it off. It's not really on there very tight at all usually. All right pay attention to where your springs came out of. Thermal valve make sure it's not all bent out of shape. You want to look at your accumulator bores, make sure they're not all scored up. Make sure your pins are not wobbling in your accumulators very much. Make sure your washers are in good shape. And that one fell off. Make sure your tabs are not all screwed up. Another place <coughs> you want to look on this is where this ceiling ring rides on the back of this sp um, sprocket right here. Make sure it's not grooved up. Chains pretty much had it. That's quite a bit of play. All right, there's different sprocket counts, which will use a different chain depending on how wide it is and how many links the chain has. So you're going to want to count that. How many colored links it has? You, you, they may ask you that. Make sure. Where your bushing rides here is not all scored up where your bearing rides is not do not bend these tabs right here that's what that speed sensor reads off of and if you screw them up it's not going to read properly here is another bearing there make sure it's in good shape make sure where your bearing rides here your bushings everything's in good shape every once in a great while the sprockets are bad but it's not very common Most common issues with this unit are the torque converter stripping out, valve body problems, chains getting worn out. Usually the rest of the unit is in pretty good shape. Every once in a while you run across one that's gotten messed up. Okay, you can take all your linkage out if you want to. 
personally I wouldn't do it. I'm going to end up taking them out to um, document all this, but personally I would just get in here and pop this up. See if I can do this without, uh, usually I got the unit laying the other way, but I want you to be able to see it. Okay, it's not going to stay up there. camera. I always does this when you're on camera. Once you got that out of there, you make sure that your support is going to be usable. It's not all messed up anywhere. Ring lands right here, make sure they're not all scored up where the bushing rides. You can take this, get your hammer. break that off and the later models they mold this to where it's like this and it's easier to get this support out without taking all that apart usually this bushing is pretty worn out see all that play I would put a whole bushing kit in but if you're only going to replace a few replace them one in a stator there and this one right here and your case bushing for sure uh, check your sprag operation it should turn counterclockwise lock clockwise we'll take our drums apart in a minute bands looking pretty good but it's pretty aged does look a little funky in some spots we'll put a band in it overdrive band there is another band in the back. Make sure we're looking good here. millimeters on this pan. Another reusable pan gasket here. Uh, most of uh, the really good kits you're going to get the uh, pan gaskets anyway. Filter. Eight millimeter here for this accumulator. Thirty torch for the 
brackets that hold your tubes in. Three quarters on the nut. Six millimeters on the Allen here. Pull your tubes out. If you're going to have a problem with a tube, it's going to be this one that we're fixing to take out. It'll be this tube right here. I've seen the braze break right here, so keep an eye on that. Make sure your springs aren't broken. Same thing on this accumulator as the others. And 10 millimeters on the arc here. I'm eventually going to take this out, but. Normally, I just loosen it up about that loose. That allows you to get everything out. So like I say, normally I don't take all that out. So snap ring here for your servo. This is spring loaded, so do be careful. When you take this out, that it does not come flying out of there and smack you in the face. Because it does have a fair amount of pressure on it. See if I can get up behind here and get it started. Oh, come on, quit being like that. at it. Same thing here, make sure this is not all hard. Same thing with your servo, make sure it's not missing pieces and it's not all hard. Check your bore again. Check your bearing down inside of here. Depending on what you have, some of these have a bushing back here, some have a bearing. Do be careful with this bearing back here because it will come apart on you and you're gonna be buying a whole planet because they don't sell it. Make sure your pinions aren't wobbling. They're not all scored up and pitted and all that good stuff bearing here usually all this is in good shape but you never know check your pinions on this one again there is a captured bearing on this one you want to make sure it feels okay ring gear make sure your teeth are okay and you have another sprag here turning counterclockwise Locking clockwise, another 
needle bearing like you got in that planet. Be careful with this thing. Get our band out of here. Yeah, it looks to be pretty good shape. All right, we got a snap ring holding our clutch pack in. Openings at the 12 o'clock. Make sure your cushion plate's not broken. Clutches actually look pretty good, but they're going to get replaced. All right, snap ring opening is at the 12 o'clock. some of this oil out of here. can be a little bit difficult to get behind. does have a spot to get snap ring pliers on it if you can get down in there to it there we go finally it is beveled bevel goes up Threading ring. Usually the bearing and the washer stay in there, so make sure not forget those. Oh, like I say, always replace that case bushing. Bearing here. Selective washer here. This one, when it's on there, it's, it's really freaking on there. It takes a fair amount to get this suction off of this damn thing to make it let go. I'm on let go. Well, usually when I wash it, it it'll come right off of there. There is another washer here. Make sure not break that thing. This is going to be another area where you may find a lot of wear pitting in this sun gear. And a bearing here, her park gear. Pitting there or in these pinions. So make sure that they are in good shape. Usually the spider gears are fine. Right, here's our speedometer gear. Make sure that this surface right here where that bushing goes is in good shape. Okay, I'm just going to pop these apart and 
show you the clutch packs. I don't think you need to watch me take the... Well, I, you can't watch me take it apart because I don't have a camera at the foot press, but it's just a snap ring that holds each one in. There's a cushion plate on this one. These are in pretty good shape. Usually the clutches are in pretty good shape. And there's a snap ring here. The piston and the return spring will come off. Get our drum up off of here. Quit being that way. Okay, another area you might find something broke is this cushion plate that's in here. This one right here. All right, it looks pretty good. Same way here. Um, snap ring, return spring, piston comes out. Uh, these are molded pistons. I would recommend that you replace them, even if they feel okay. Uh, turning clockwise, locking counterclockwise. There is a removable ring on this one, so when you pull your piston off, and you go to replace it, um, make sure that you keep this ring because if you put it in there without it, it's not going to apply. Uh, bearing in our hub, another bearing. Make sure where your teeth ride on your hubs that they're not all beat up. All right, our last clutch pack here. This piston right here. The one in the bottom, especially, are bad about cracking. So be sure and place it. All right, these are burnt. Probably this piston is broke. Make sure your cushion plate's okay. So the steels are going to have to be replaced in here. Pressure plate and the cushion plate's okay. This is a two piece here. You got balance piston, return spring, and the regular piston. And snap ring, take that out. Snap ring, take this out. Piston and return spring on that. All right, pretty straightforward on this one. Gonna replace the band, the chain, that valve, forward engagement valve and the valve body. Uh, I'm gonna replace the pump shaft bearing even though it looks okay, I always replace them. The boost sleeve in the valve body is probably going to need to be replaced. It usually always does. Um, bushing kit, torque converter, filter, rebuild kit. Um, everybody always asks me what kit to buy. Transtech. Transtech with Ray Bestest clutches. Uh, let's see. I think that was it. All right, we'll see you for the rebuild.